Okay, we're back. Um, got another song. I wasn't going to film two songs today, but um, this one's pretty crazy. Lots of chords. So our first song was basically the whole thing was a riff, and it was my job to kind of make the sections um, distinct from each other and help create dynamic through the whole thing. This song um, is crazy. And that's literally the title, Crazy the Whole Time. Um, man, this has a ton of chords and some odd phrasing where it's not just a two-bar pattern or a four-bar pattern. We have five-bar phrases in the chorus, which really threw me off at first when I was trying to write my chart. Um, it's in the key of B, so I tuned down a half step, and I'm playing it like it's C. So that's a B chord. I should call everything flat, but it sounds weird to say C flat, right? So B, A flat, so it's really C flat, A flat, E flat, F flat. That's kind of how my mind thinks of it. It's it's weird. C flat is not something you normally say. Um, really, the way my mind thinks is in numbers, and that's what I wrote. A number chart. Crazy the whole time. So, um, the direction on this given was not Nashville. Specifically, don't do the Nashville thing that you normally do on all the other songs in this town. Um, they wanted a little Beatles, a little Amy Winehouse, um, some Mick Ronson type stuff. So, this is going to be really fun. And the song is all over the place quarterly, but, you know, the melody, vocal melody ties it all together. There's a piano playing um, eighth notes through it that uh, they're trying to pedal notes in between the chord changes where they can. So you'll hear... Um, like we're going to two chords, but we're leaving the high voice the same. That's kind of what I mean. There, there's consistent notes through chord changes like that where possible. So... Uh, I already played a little bit of a track, just some like, you know, beat to. Just some slaps. Um, Cornell Dupree style uh, on in the verses, like really in the pre choruses. And I've got a little, a little bit of reverb. I'm using the same chain that I used on the other, other song, Analog Outfitters. Um, I don't have any overdrive pedal at on, so this is just straight amp. I'm on the neck pickup, my Jazzmaster. And actually, I think I'm going to go to the bridge pickup, but I want to start in the chorus. So you're not going to hear the track top to bottom. That's not always the way I work. So let me try um, coming up with something for the chorus. And this is going to be kind of bigger downstrokes. I'll leave the reverb on. Maybe I'll step on an EQ. Or... So, uh, I, I stepped on the boost side of a box of rock pedal. Not the overdrive side, just the boost. Um, let's try that. See what happens. strings but there's just something about something about a jazz master with all the extra string length behind the bridge it makes it just feel different than than most guitars I'm used to
a little too thick sounding. Let me turn off um, a couple things. I'm going to go to a, a different reverb. <laughs> to the nobles. That's, that's a little better, I think. I might put a couple moves in there like that, just not so it, so it's not just straight. Okay, let's try again. sides. I do that rarely. Most of the time I switch it up, but let's see what it sounds like. Do the same thing. Go back to my first track. way down. That was my part for the last two bars of the first chorus, but the second of those two bars is gone. Um, and it just goes empty, so I don't need to be playing big downstrokes right there, so I'm going to punch um, the last two bars and get off at the last bar of that chorus. <laughs> a tuba, wah, 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 sousaphone, whatever, um, still playing, but I think it, I think it's better that I'm off there, so let's double that. <laughs> One more time. No, 
Siri, dang it. <laughs> second guy I tried to go not right just not right okay one more time those two bars but I want to hear the whole track starts with a bar of rest Every, everyone's off for a bar so I'll play my two parts starting on the second Stayed in on the on the five chords, G flat. Um, even though the rest of the band dropped out, just because it's, I just want them to have that option. They can mute me if they don't want it there. Um, but I kind of think it's cool that that I'm still playing up until the very end, so that it's just vocal. It doesn't, the song doesn't step down. That's kind of how I hear it anyway. So here's my double. I've been crazy parts working together so I, I hear a kind of a vibrato thing <laughs> thing than a real slow like vibey um, vibrato so those other guitars are still gonna be here I'll turn them down just a little bit um, they're kind of big uh, sounding played with a lot of velocity downstrokes and you'll hear 
you'll hear my little uh, slaps in there. Um, not with that reverb, but they're, they're in there. I'm staying on the same guitar because I feel like this is a great guitar for both of these parts. And I'm playing different pickup settings. Um, I'm putting vibrato on this one, so I don't feel like I need to make a guitar change to get a different tone that works that's right if that makes sense so let's let's just go from the top and see what what comes out here with this vibrato thing just be the piano and the vocal for those eight bars so let's listen to that and I'll come in on the pre-chorus <laughs> are weird four to one to three major for two bars four to five to one major back half of that's something I see every day in Nashville but the front half is and the verse changes I don't think I've ever seen that four six major flat seven three major four three major one three major but man it's really cool um, and the vocal really ties it together so mm -hmm. I want to listen back to this part and uh, just hear it, hear it in context with the slaps panned over. <laughs> Basically, I'm going. I'm playing triads. Root, fifth, third. 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 And then on the last chord, I'm building. I'm just playing chord tones. as well. Oh, that's it right there.
that's cool. I like it. And then uh, in this down, there's a short down verse, and I know you still haven't heard the entire song, top to bottom, but this is kind of how I work on, on songs like this. Um, I write a chart, and then I attack the important sections first, or the sections that I'll, I'll have the most going on, and that's usually the chorus. I'll have the lower lower strings going, down strokes, bigger guitar sounds. I'll get those settled in first and then build around it. And then I'll listen through and, and see what's missing. Um, so here there's a down verse, and this is on the track that I did before I started filming it, the track with the, the reverb slaps on it. <laughs> So there, I'm just going, uh... So it starts on, uh, after the downbeat. Two, three, four... But I start on the uh, the four chord, just arpeggiating it, and then the six major, arpeggiating it as well, flat seven major, and then the little wiggle from this awesome whammy bar. Uh, kind of sounds like a Amy Winehouse thing, you know. And then that goes into the last chorus, so that's a very short down verse. Here it is from the last, uh, the, the end of the second chorus. <laughs> drop everything out, let the vocal, you know, hit real hard on the, on the second bar. I think it's cool. So I've got three parts. I've got the slaps that include that little arpeggio thing. I've got the, uh, the doubled chorus parts that are kind of heavier. Not heavy in the sense that they're heavy rock chords, but I'm, I'm playing down strokes and it's single notes. I'm playing toward the bridge, so I'm kind of going for like a more garagey indie type sound than than big rock. So those are those are the chords I'm playing. It's one chord and then a three major, but the bass note is the seven, so it's a three over seven. six minor but the six minor is for two bars and then a bar of four so that's the five bar phrase that then restarts in the chorus So I need to come up with something in the chorus that, that offsets um, the other stuff that I've done. And maybe, maybe it's a slide thing. Let's see if I can stay out of the way of the vocal here while doing this. Um, yeah, let's go from the top of the chorus. I think I'm gonna go box of rock boost side here.
On the first half, I was doing. I think it just. I think it just needs to be the the standard. Like, move as little as possible between the chords. I'm staying on the. Try that again. So she and I are landing on the same note at the same time. So I need to not do that. Let's see if I can get away with uh, going higher in just this spot. <laughs> Cool. 
dig that. I'm going to do the same thing in the next chorus. <laughs> drop out the band drops out but I keep doing that high line over the five chord I just want to listen make sure that's cool <laughs> getting into the second bar. But it might even be weird to hit the pickup. I might just hit the downbeat of the... Uh... I guess that's a G natural note since it would be G sharp, but I'm down a, whole, a half step. Oh, strange. Nobody's resolving there. Cleaner. And the vocal resolves it. So that's kind of cool. So I've got these two low guitars. And a super high um, tremolo, or sorry, slide. And then I have this. Uh, the trombone part. And that sort of works with the slap. So I'll play those two soloed together. Three, four. tremolo just a minute ago maybe that's a good idea maybe some chorus tremolo diamonds diamonds is a very natural word um, it just means whole notes uh, it probably evolved because a whole notes kind of a circle and some people started writing them a little more angularly I'm, just, I'm completely guessing uh, but now if there's a if there's a diamond on a chart typically just draw it around the note. I'm just trying to find a chart that has some diamonds on it, like right here. These two chords are diamonds, so you just hold them for the full length of the bar. That's all it really means. Back to this song. So let me find a good tremolo sound. Again, using my HX this. 
So I can't do it this high because the slide's that high, but I shouldn't be down here because my other double chorus guitar part's down here. So maybe, maybe I'll play it somewhere in the middle. <laughs> this helicopter sounding tremolo on here um, and I have it set with an expression pedal so I can go real slow or obnoxiously fast this one I will change guitars for Paul. Now this guitar is not down a half step, so I need to be careful. I do this a lot. I'll pick up a guitar that that is either it's a half step off of what guitar I just set down, and then I'll try to play in the same key. That's not the same chord. And if I tune muted with my cans on, I'm not really able to hear it, and so then we'll we'll play, and you hear this giant train wreck, and it's like, oh, whoops. Please let me start that again, because I am a half, half step off. So I'm going to try playing um, chorus chords here. I'm down here now. So good to know. This guitar is in drop D. The other guitar is in E flat standard. So I just need to stay away from the low note and realize that everything's shifted down a half step from what I, the position I was playing in on my previous pass. So let's see what happens. Here's a chorus. <laughs> Also, I realized that I have two tracks record enabled, so I need to not record over my last, the slide part. Take two. slide down so we can hear um, what this part is doing. Instead of two bars of six minor in the chorus, the first one's a four. So it goes. I've been playing. Third bar is a four chord. figure out if anything that I have really needs to be changed. I think the slide is okay because I'm playing notes that belong to both of those chords, but 
um, not any that don't work. So let's hear with just the slide part. <laughs> because my two eighth note downstroke guitars are following the bass line and it's not a true four chord which in this tune where I am now would be this it's four over six so I'm playing the so it still works let's listen see if there's anything that clashes here I don't really think that there is that all still works the clash is the part i'm doing now and that's why i didn't hear it until now so i'm gonna make a note on my chart maybe I found my pen so instead of one, three over seven, six minor, six minor, four, it's one, three over seven, four over six, six minor, four. One, three over seven, four over six, six minor, four. That is enough of a difference uh, for us to definitely need, need that in there. <laughs> I still feel like this part's getting lost a little bit. That's better. I went back to the boost side of the box of rock instead of my GE7, which is set to kind of a mid-range boost. Maybe the, those are the voicings. Let's try this. getting in the way of my no it's the slide 
I am going to mute that bar of the slide. I think this will sound a lot better. <laughs> doing two notes now. Oh, maybe I will go to the end since my other guitars are. They can always mute it. I've been crazy eight bars of me doing nothing in the second verse so I feel like I should play something there um, let's just go to a clean sound I'll just kind of play a rhythm part there after chorus one <laughs> I'm going to go back to the guitar that I tuned for this song. and pre so I think that works a lot um, I think I'm done I think I'm good I always send stuff off and say hey if you need something changed you need something different let me know uh, there you go hope you enjoyed that one that's a little left of center of what I usually get so it was really fun for me see ya <laughs>